Vladimir Stenek is a senior climate change specialist at the International Finance Corporation. So we've, and we've had the European finance perspective. We're now about to get the international finance perspective. Interesting. Vladimir is uh, um, well qualified. Um, he's actually holding uh, graduate and undergraduate degrees from the University of uh, is that Columbia? Uh, University of Columbia, Berkeley University, or? Anyway, <laughs> you can't remember. This is good. Uh, also uh, uh, from the University of uh, Santiago in Chile and uh, the Universidad Nacional de uh, Ingeniería, which I assume is an engineering university in Lima, Peru. So well qualified. Um, uh, Vladimir, uh, we look forward to your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. Thank you very much for the invitation and, and to Piang for organizing this important conference. Uh, I'm going to be talking about climate resilience management tools that we're developing at, uh, at International Finance Corporation or, or, or IFC, and specifically tools for uh, ports and waterways. Uh, I think this, what you'll see, it's a very novel approach. Uh, we have integrated some new information that we believe is going to be very useful for port developers and operators, and uh, I hope uh, to, to PIANC members. Uh, just before I start going into the details of the tool, uh, a couple of words why an institution like IFC is uh, interested in developing these tools. Uh, we are the private sector arm of the World Bank uh, Group. So we deal strictly with the private sector, we invest in basically all sectors around all, all of the world, so in all developing countries. Uh, here's um, a summary of, of the volume of investments we did uh, last fiscal year, so it's about $19 billion. And then there's sectoral distribution, also regional distribution. So as you can see, we're well diversified. Uh, as I mentioned, we uh, work strictly with the private sector. We invest on uh, commercial terms. And for us, financial sustainability as well as environmental and social sustainability are very important uh, because we want our projects uh, to, to go on even after we leave the investments. So as all investments institutions, when we look at the projects, uh, our investment teams look at the, uh, the, the cash flows, right? That's kind of the, the heart of a project, cash flows of, of a project. Looking at costs and revenues, uh, analyzing whether the assumptions are correct, uh, and then making decisions on that. The underlying assumptions in many cases are very much linked to, to uh, climate indices. Uh, it, it seems uh, obvious, but uh, sometimes we, we, we just don't think about it. But basically, in all sectors, climate is one of the underlying factors. So if you look at the hydropower uh, project, of course, if there's not going to be enough rainfall, the project is going to be affected. If there's too much rainfall, uh, the financial terms are, are going to be changing. In forestry, in agriculture, is the same at, at, as well as ports. So climate is, is one aspect that, that we want to look at. We know that, that it's a significant uh, characteristic that may uh, alter, um, alter the company's financials. So these each sector has its specific climate variables. Uh, and if we look at only historic climate variables, we may be missing what may be, what's going to be happening in the future and what the financials uh, are, are going, how they're going to be performing. So just as one example, this is um, uh, a kind of normalized graph of summer temperatures in Northern Hemisphere, historic summer, summer temperatures. And they kind of nicely fit un under a normal curve. So historically, one would take this curve uh, and, and analyze uh, uh, how to design the, the parameters of, of a project. However, over time, this climate variable has been shifting and changing really significantly, as you can see. So what used to be uh, kind of the center, central value in, in the 50s, uh, these days it's very much off central values. What used to be two standard deviations or even three standard deviations uh, away from, from the center in the 50s, uh, now it's becoming more normal. So if one doesn't take into account these changes, change in, in, in the central values, but also in the extreme, 
one will may miss uh, important as aspects that are key to uh, performance uh, of, of a project. And of course, here are a few examples of what happens if one uh, if projects are designed to, to historic values. Uh, this is just an example for, from DC, uh, Washington DC a few years ago. We had, I think, five days of consecutive uh, temperatures over 35 degrees uh, with re resulting uh, buckling of, of railway, uh, some accidents in metro. Uh, on the main city airport, uh, the tarmac melted and, and, and the airplane started sinking in, so they needed to come in with uh, tractors to, to take them out. Uh, and then these are some uh, unusual storms that have been happening uh, in the UK, in, I think in 2012. Anyway, so uh, to, to, to ensure that an investment is climate resilient, one, one needs to start asking s several questions, right? But basically, what is going to be, sorry about this, well, what is going to be the, um, for the project's location? Uh, what are the expected, expected changes in normals and, and the extremes? And then what should be the measures to, to address these normals and extremes in order to maintain uh, financial performance of a project? Um, so in, over the past years, we did a number of uh, climate risk assessment. Here's a, an example from the port in Colombia. Uh, so this is in... Um, uh, Port, Port Muelles del Bosque, uh, where we looked at uh, what the climate impacts on the projects are, on the project are, and what can be done about it. So, you know, as we've seen in, in some other uh, cases, we did a high-resolution study. We did some modeling. Uh, we looked at uh, one of the things that we looked at was how inundation and, and uh, is going to uh, affect the performance of a project. We saw that the, the causeway that uh, connects the, the port to, uh, to land is going to be increasingly flooded. It's, it's already flooded, but the frequency is going to be increasing. Uh, we analyzed the, uh, the cost of business interruption incorporated into the financial model and then presented it to, to the company together with, uh, with uh, recommendations of what should be the adaptation uh, uh, steps. So the company looked at that, uh, uh, they validated the, the assumptions, uh, and then the next thing they did, they, they, they went, they borrowed $10 million and invested uh, in, in, in a couple of works. As you can see, the causeway, so this part here, a few years later, was, uh, was raised and, and uh, the, the port became much more resilient uh, to, to uh, climate impacts. So this is all well, uh, well and good for for uh, projects where we know that there, there may be some impacts, right? This is a really uh, involved, detailed, high-resolution work. However, in, in, our, uh, in our projects, we cannot dedicate so much attention and time to old projects. What we need is some kind of uh, medium-level screening tool that initially can tell us, are there any high risks that warrant this high-resolution uh, assessment, or maybe they're very low risk. So with that in, in mind, we, were, uh, we started developing uh, these tools for several sectors. Again, ports and waterways is one of them. Uh, and we wanted a tool uh, the, that would have these characteristics, right? So uh, basically information that will help um, uh, identify main risk and what may be the, the adaptation options. Uh, it should be granular enough from a medium level uh, assessment, but it the caveat is it's not going to replace the, the high resolution um, uh, assessments. Um, it should have global coverage, so it should be uh, useful for all IFC regions, as, and as you've seen, it's uh, all around the world. And it can be used with different levels of information. So sometimes we would have just information about the port location and nothing more than that. Uh, and we would want to know, well, are there any uh, foreseeable risk or changes in key climate variables in the future. Uh, at other times, we, can, we would have very detailed information about uh, the, the operations and the assets, so we would want to integrate also that to obtain a, a better information. So we, we, uh, we partnered with uh, Instituto Hidraulico de Cantabria, and we are very lucky to have Inigo here uh, today with us, uh, Maclanera, another Spanish company, and ANCAR, uh, National Center for Atmospheric uh, Research in, in, in the U.S. So it was uh, a, a, a good cooperation and, and out of which came, came this tool. Uh, the tool takes uh, you know, 
standard approach where we uh, assess the risk uh, in function of exposure and vulnerability of uh, characteristic port assets uh, uh, and, and also of hazards that are relevant for, for that uh, specific coordinate for the port. Uh, and the risk is, is expressed as consequences on, on the ports and assets and operation, operations in financial terms and also environmental and social. So in financial terms, we, we try to provide um, a numeric, um, uh, numeric result of, of the impacts, and then for environmental and social, it's more of a qualitative approach. So the way we did it, we, we divided the, um, the port operations in, in different uh, segments, and for each of these, we assigned, uh, we identified uh, material impacts that may affect uh, these assets or operations. In the next steps, we identify for each of these impacts what are the key climate variables uh, for, for those. And then uh, produce the, the information for all these uh, climate variables for global coverage, as I mentioned. Um, we built uh, operational thresholds in, in, into the tool, um, it, its internal database. Uh, the value of assets, so there's a, a database of evaluation of assets and, and operations. And based on, on, on all of that, the result is what the, the financial implications uh, of the risk and general risk levels. So just to illustrate, oh, so I think one, one of the uh, key aspects of what's under the, under the HUD, right, in, in, this, um, in this tool, and what information existed and what information was built specifically for, for this tool. So uh, there, there, there's an, a number of, I think, very significant uh, databases that were, were, were built for this that were previously in existence. So for example, uh, as before we had a global database of atmospheric and oceanographic variables, but for this tool, uh, what we built were uh, uh, these variables uh, at same scale, so everything is com comparable. Uh, built uh, marine indicators, uh, indicator projections. Uh, um, we also uh, modeled uh, tropical cyclone projections. So whereas most of current analysis are based on uh, tropical cyclones of preservations, uh, ANCAR produced projections uh, for the future. Uh, and then a couple of databases that, that were built, I think these are very significant, uh, were about uh, operational thresholds. So currently what exists out there are different recommendations and piece, bits and pieces. These were all uh, normalized and included in the tool, as well as the, the valuation of uh, port activities and, and their assets. So these are some just uh, where the data sources and what the res resolutions are, uh, some technical information. So uh, just to show a little bit the granularity of, 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 the, um, uh, of, of the inputs, uh, one can enter either just the coordinate, but then one can uh, input the, the terminal, what the, the shared assets are, but one can go in, even into the um, detail of what, the, uh, what very uh, small assets are in, in the um, uh, in the specific port. Uh, so, um, as I mentioned, the, the database uh, contains the cost and valuation data uh, that, that's based on the potential revenue uh, per unit, uh, infrastructure and, and, and works of value, revenue by, by cargo, and, and so on. All this information, again, it's standardized, but the user can modify if one has better information. One can uh, modify these values to obtain better results. Uh, the risk is, is expressed is, uh, as uh, in function of revenue losses and investment increase. Uh, here is kind of uh, uh, the, the template that we used. So high risk is, um, uh, is considered if there is uh, an investment that increases more than 10% or the revenue losses are uh, higher than 8%. Than eight, eight uh, finally, this is kind of the, the output what one gets from, uh, as a result for, for, uh, for this specific tool. Uh, or for specific port that one analyzes, under different scenarios, what are the increases in cost or operational, uh, uh, operational cost uh, for, for this uh, investment. And then based on, on, the, on the level of risk that one analyzes, right, as I mentioned, low risk, you may not need to do anything. If it's high risk, perhaps the, 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 best, uh, the best following step is to do a very uh, detailed high resolution analysis 
and if it's medium risk, uh, the tool provides recommendations what can, what can be done. Uh, so j just to conclude, we are finalizing this tool and I think that in the next uh, few months we'll have the final version and we hope that uh, once it's made public, uh, the, it's going to be useful for Pianchi and other port developers and so on. Thanks.